TV. The Panther basketball team is ranked 10th in the nation while we're ranked number one in your heart. Welcome to the Prowl. Pride, the passion, the purple. This is the Prowl. Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of UNI TV's The Prowl. I'm Margot Sturgis. And I'm Sean Dangler. We are very excited to bring you an inside look at the latest sporting news, whether it is about our Panther athletic teams or other activities and clubs across campus. The Panther basketball team is having an historic season. Let's take a look back to the UNI 2010 team to see how they compare with today's team. Looking at today's Panthers basketball, it's easy to draw some parallels between this team and the 2009-2010 Panthers. We can look back and see players like Jordan Eagleseater being represented today by Seth Tuttle with their outstanding post presence. Ali Farouk Manesh, who is replicated this season by Matt Bohannon with their sniper accuracy from three-point range. Or, of course, Coach Ben Jacobson, who was at the helm of both teams. Not since that season have the Panthers been so dominant. While we haven't seen any upsets in the regular season, it's worth noting that the 2009-10 Panthers were in the exact same situation. And at this point in the season, no one could have anticipated the shocking win against Kansas. The teams are statistically similar, and maybe the only significant difference between these two teams appears when you stop to look at rankings. At week 15 in the 2009-2010 season, USA Today coaches poll had UNI ranked 24th. They're currently sitting firmly in 11th. Of course, as talent comes and goes, it's hard to use any one team as a ruler for future performance. But based on what we've already seen of the Panthers this season and what we know they're capable of, the pieces are definitely in place for our Panthers to put on an amazing show for the remainder of the season. If history tells us anything, our Panthers have some big games in March. Now it is time to take a look at the men's track team. Mike Lieb has the story. The UNI men's track and field teams have shot off to a great start so far this season. With the indoor season coming to an end soon, the boys have already set the pace to success in the outdoor season with a large number of broken records and personal bests. You know, we got a lot of young people this year, and, uh, you know, some of them, they, a lot of them stepping up real good coming in the conference, and, uh, you know, I'm really happy with this team, you know, like, with everybody, everybody, I can see every day everybody working hard at what they do, and then, and especially bonding, you know what I'm saying, we've we been coming a lot closer together as a team, and that's a good thing. I mean, overall, I think the performance this year is um, the team atmosphere in general is for us a great accomplishment. I've been, it's my fourth year, and, uh, I've never really had an experience like that. It's, it's great, we're all supporting each other, so that's very different. And we'll see how many more people we might be able to qualify for nationals as for indoors right now. That's of course the first, the first goal we have right now. Highlights of the indoor season include sophomore Brandon Carnes breaking the 60 meter school record with a time of 6.69 seconds and senior hurdler Sebastian Barth breaking the 60 meter hurdles record with a time of 7.72 seconds not only setting a school record, but sharing the fastest time in the country as well. These achievements only drive these track stars to compete even harder in the season. Oh, it's, it's something you always strive for. You see the records, you see the potential when you're healthy, and uh, that's just what's, what keeps me going. And I mean, I also have the teammates and the coaches that support me the whole way, and I just love it, keep, keep doing the sport. If I, if I do win a race, like, I still want to do better and run faster, so I'm uh, like, I'm always hungry to like, you know, run faster and reach success. On and off the track, these athletes say success drives the team relationship and they look forward to continuing the success with the outdoor season next month, where they look to throw, jump and run their way past even more records. Uh, I mean, we have so many things going. We have uh, team, team dinners going on before meets um, in, the, in the separate uh, groups. and. We talk a lot more than we did before in and out of track and have more activities. I, I love it. It's a, it's a big family and that supports the, the performances. I feel like it's going to be a good season. So, um, you know, and the one and two, hopefully relays. So, and I'm looking forward to it. And I'm, I'm really hungry for outdoor. I mean, it goes fast. It's, uh, we start 
March, April, and uh, I mean, get as many people as possible to the next rounds of regionals and nationals. And uh, I mean, we want to have a great impact on the on the, on the conference meet. Uh. A shout out to my whole team and the coaches. Uh, I'm really proud who I work with every day, and um, you know, I look for it for all of us to have a great season. But now it is time for the proud corner with Ian Shalonic. Today he is interviewing an athlete who is breaking records in the water. Afton Fife. As as they said, I'm here with a sophomore Afton Fife, swimmer in the uh, United swim team. Uh, First question is, uh, why did you choose to swim at UNI? Um, I actually chose to swim at UNI because of Doug Humphrey, the coach, and the great team. I just came on a visit and absolutely fell in love. That's great. Uh, so your dad played basketball here, and uh, you're on the swim team. Uh, how has uh, UNI sports impacted your family? Um, I've been a Panther fan since I was born, watching UNI basketball, UNI football, even a couple of volleyball games. From when I even can remember, I just have been going to UNI games Cool. Um, so you've been uh, breaking lots of records this season. About how many have you uh, got so far? Um, I'm a part of five relay records and the hundred backstroke. Cool. Um, how many did you broke some this weekend? Uh, how many did you guys break at the swim meet? We broke every single record but four of them. So. Wow, that's that's pretty impressive. Uh, what uh, what is your favorite uh, thing to swim in? My favorite thing to swim is probably the freestyle, probably the hundred freestyle, but. I've been more backstroke this year, so. How do you uh, like to doing that? It's like my second favorite stroke, so it's okay. I mean, I don't hate it, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Um, how has the uh, coach Humphreys, uh, Humphreys improved your guys' team? Um, Recruiting-wise, he has improved it tremendously. It's amazing. Um, being just, he's kind of like a dad figure to us, and I feel like he has that, just he knows that Everyone has their role. He knows the role for everybody, and I feel like he tells everyone that, and it's like a family atmosphere, and I think that has helped us a lot, too, and he just knows how to train us. So, Cool. Um, what are you guys uh, continuing to do for the improvement, improving for next season? Because you guys improved, what, four or five spots from uh, last year's in the tournament? Um, well, right now we're not swimming, actually. We have like a two-week break off. Um, we have a meeting, actually, a week from today to figure out when we're going to get back in the pool and it's probably going to be that coming Monday. So we'll probably have practices every night. I think we're going to do some yoga for something fun to do. So That'd be kind of cool. Um, what are you guys looking forward to uh, most this off season? Probably just getting better, to be honest. I know we have to work on some starts, some turns, but for the most part, yeah, just getting better. Cool. Um, but yeah, like your, like your brother's uh, Look, being looked at for you and I, uh, what's that, what's that like? He is being looked at for you and I. You and I was the first school to actually offer him, mm -hmm. so he was really excited about that. Kind of nervous too, because he didn't know people are pressuring him. Like, are you going to go to you and I? Your dad went here, your sister went here, your mom went here. Mm -hmm. Is that where you're going to go? And he says, I don't know yet. He's just going on a bunch of visits right now. So, yeah. Cool. Is that for uh, basketball then? Yep, basketball. What position does he play? He's center. He's six nine. So. Oh wow. And yeah. How old is he? He is a sophomore in high school. Oh wow! So that's <laughs> a little, you know, a little early, but it's still cool that he's yeah. getting. Um, so I mean, you probably wouldn't be around when he would. But uh, are you trying to influence him to come here? I mean, maybe a little bit, but not totally. I mean, I just want him to be happy wherever he goes. I mean, I know he'd be happy here, but I'm not going to pressure him or anything. Yeah. Um, so besides swimming, um, what uh, kind of things do you do here, you and I? Um, I am in the elementary education program here. Cool. Um, what kind of what are you, do you have any specific focus or just the elementary or? Um, well, I want to do L Ed probably like first, second grade, maybe kindergarten, and then I'm also wanting to do special education. So oh, that's good. Not a lot of people do that. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's cut it back to the the desk. And now it's time to learn about the hard workers on courts and fields everywhere. <laughs> it's not the athletes. Veteran Sean Dangler has the story. <laughs> Athletes in sports are asked many questions, but there's another participant who's asked nothing. Hi, Jake Rasmussen. Being able to be on the field in that competition, you can feel the crowd noise, uh, you can feel the athletes, you know, passion, and you're, you're right in the mix. You're right in that mix. And being able to witness what's going on up close on the field and be engaged in the game.
Jake's enjoyment is unmatched compared to other referees of the University of Northern Iowa's intramural program. Even though Jake is currently refereeing soccer and volleyball, his idol comes from the NFL. Kids are looking up to Cam Newton and RG3 when he was in his prime. Me? Ed Hockley, all the way. He's one of the biggest inspirations of my life. I try to model everything I do after him. He commands the field with power and demands respect from players and fans. Like Ed, Jake loves the feeling of power he exerts in a game. I do think I'm more powerful than anybody out there. Um, it's kind of just, when I put on those stripes, it's instant respect. If they don't show it, then you better get off the court. Showing respect is important to Jake because he has advice for anyone who wants to give him lip. Take it somewhere else. Uh, may work with mommy and daddy, but you're a big boy, big girl. Grow up. Okay? It's a lack of respect. It shows that they're going to fail in life. Not only on the court, but they're going to fail in life. If they can't handle participating by the rules on the court or the field, how are they going to grow up? This tough love approach is only part of Jake's advice to future referees. You got to make your calls quick, confident, and you got to grow tough skin. That's the biggest thing. You're going to have second guessers all the time, no matter what sport, no matter what the call. Any call you make will be debated. So you got to make sure you're confident and you got to have, you got, it has to be quick. If you're hesitant, then people question it quicker. You make a call right away. They're not going to question you. Being confident is the definition of Jake Rasmussen. While at UNI, he has found joyful moments throughout intramural refereeing. Honestly, when people are having fun, um, it may not, they may not be good. Either team may not have a lot of talent, but hey, they're diving on the court, laughing, high-fiving. I enjoy, I enjoy that. For The Prowl, I'm Sean Dangler. Refereeing is truly an art, but it's time to learn about an art of the ocean. Anton Ryder sat down with scuba director Jim Hall to discuss the incredible activity of scuba diving. There's something about being underwater and then breathing and that calming effect and, and then being able to see um, the wildlife, the fish, and just the contours of the bottom of, of uh, the, the ocean or a quarry or the pool or, um, and, and uh, for me it's just, I, I love seeing the students smile. I'm Jim Hall and I'm the uh, scuba instructor here at UNI and I've been at UNI for 32 years. Scuba is a self-contained underwater breathing apparatus and it was developed in the late 40s after World War II and uh, so you're just breathing, breathing compressed air at a depth. There's uh, quite a bit of equipment but for the student uh, we have about 32, 34 skills that we, that we uh, have the students go over and perfect. Okay. So that's, that's the, the gist of it. Plus we have a lecture and, and uh, five tests that go along with that. Uh, being with a buddy and buddy breathing, that is very important. If somebody has a problem underwater, you want to be with a buddy and then you want to be able to help them out or they can help you. So that is a big part of it. Also, if there is a, an issue with um, something simple like a leg cramp, how do you take care of that underwater without getting nervous? And, and really that's what we're doing is building confidence through multiple dives in the pool before we go out into the quarry. There are some people that just, the water's not their gig. So that's fine, don't, don't even try it. Uh, but there are people that it would be a great activity for them, I know it would be a great activity, and it's something you can do for your entire life. So, um, I think more people should do it. I don't think it's for everybody. Some of the best dives have just been in shallower water. They haven't been deep dives, but uh, I, can, I can remember like it happened yesterday, coming up over a coral head and having three um, um, rays right in front of me. I can remember seeing a manta ray. I can remember seeing uh, my first shark and thinking that looks pretty cool. Even if you don't see much, I'm st I still have fun. Um, and I always love, love um, 
just dive in with students because they're trying to have fun too. Welcome to UNITV's The Prowl Roundtable. I'm Riley Cosgrove, and I'm here with Mike Lieb and Samantha Castor today. And this week, we're going to talk about um, the different athletes that we have at UNI and who we think is the best and who we think um, isn't getting enough credit. So let's begin. I know you picked someone who we all know is yeah. getting a lot of attention, has been getting a lot of attention this year. Yeah, um, my pick for I th who I think is the best athlete at UNI is uh, David Johnson of the football team. He's a running back. Um, he just um, left UNI, and um, so far this last weekend, he is at the NFL Combine, where he produced amazing results. Um, top of the class in um, the broad jump, vertical jump, nearly all the drills for the running backs. And the reason why I think he is the best athlete at UNI is not only his football skills, but his track skills and his basketball skills that he um, accomplished in high school. He was a two-time Drake um, qualifier and uh, got second place his junior and senior year in that, as well as, a ba as an outstanding basketball player. Um, I think we're going to see a lot coming out of David Johnson in the future. Do you think David Johnson has um a chance of getting drafted right away in uh, the NFL? Or is it going to be like a Michael Sam situation where he's going to get drafted and then they're going to take him out and then they're going to draft him? I, him I would not be surprised. I think David Johnson is one of the premier athletes right now, premier running backs and uh, prospects in the NFL. Already word is that Minnesota Vikings are looking at him, whether that is um, something that's going to happen. We're just going to have to wait and see. But I would not be surprised to see David Johnson in the NFL very soon. Who did you pick? Um, I'm interested to hear. So I didn't choose uh, an athlete that most people think of. Uh, I decided to go with Paige uh, Knodel. She's on the track and field team. Uh, she actually is participating in a bunch of different events through track and field. She does the pentathlon, uh, 60 meters of the pentathlon. She does individual 60 meters um, hurdles. Uh, she does long jump javelin everything so she does Jeez. she does several events for indoor and outdoor and i think uh most people don't really know how much effort uh the track and field team actually oh, puts into yeah, their uh their sport and i think they need to kind of be more highlighted like mike's piece kind of showed the men's track team recently but um she just is an overall like great athlete just with all the things that she's involved in yeah, with definitely. track and field. As a runner myself, I, I feel that um, especially distance endurance athletes don't get the respect that they are deserve, and especially dec decathlon athletes um, that we see here in the college level, they are the ultimate athletes, and we see this like ultimate Olympians. These guys, these girls, they're just um, they've got all the athletic abilities that are necessary. Um, very strong, very physical, very. And, um, strong endurance. So, uh, Riley, who, do you, who did you choose for your Well, athlete? I agree with Sammy talking about, you said that the women's track team doesn't get enough attention. I picked a female basketball player, and being from the 712 side of the state, I picked Brittany Donaldson because she's from Sioux City, and I actually, like, briefly kind of knew her in high school, but she's very talented, and um, she actually, aside from all of her success in basketball. Academically, she's received uh, Missouri Valley Conference awards she did last year. She was on the MVC academic role and then the MVC student um, academic award. So, and with all the, obviously our men's basketball team is really successful this year, but I feel like the ladies are kind of getting the shaft, a little like shadowed, getting caught yeah. out in the cold. Yeah, we have we have some great sports here that are very unrecognized. Like we just had Afton on. Swimming is a great sport. We have a bunch of great ladies on that team. We have a great track and field team. We have a great soccer team. Most of these people aren't getting recognized because we have obviously our amazing men's basketball team, but we have all of these other great sports that people should be recognizing. So. And another point I was saying earlier. I mean, you're talking about David Johnson, but I was talking about. You know, 
we shouldn't focus on one person on one team. We should focus on a lot of different people. Yeah, on definitely. Teams. And and we've had an amazing wrestling team <laughs> for the last few years here, nationally ranked, top five even. And I think every single person on that team is equally as impressive as the other wrestler. And it's just, it's amazing how much of a depth that the UNI athletic teams have. And that's what makes us stand out from the other schools in our level, especially. Mm -hmm. So you got guys like David Johnson, you, you know, and it's just good players, but amazing team. And their dedication towards that team is what really stands out. Well, and I think we're lucky that we have um, all these good sports teams at our school. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, we're only, I mean, we are Division One, but we, there's, we're not a big dog, but we have all these amazing athletic programs. I mean, like the women's swim team, I did a story on them last mm -hmm. week, our basketball team, obviously. Um, our women's volleyball team is always competitive and always um, at the top, and our wrestling team especially. So um, I just think we're pretty lucky to have all these amazing sports teams mm -hmm. at our university. Yeah. All right, so we each chose our favorite athletes at UNI. You can debate who is your favorite. You can tweet at us. You can go on Facebook, tell us who you think your favorite athlete is. But we'll go back to our next package. I'm Mike Lieb. I'm, I'm Samantha Caster. And I'm Riley Cosgrove. Take it away, Sammy. As stated earlier in the broadcast, the Panther basketball men's basketball team is having a historic year and junior guard Matt Bohannon has played large roles in the success. Our very own Ian uh, sat down with Matt and discussed how his work has paid off. Athletics has played an important role in the Bohannon family for a long time. I spoke to you and I men's basketball standout Matt Bohannon about how sports have impacted him growing up. Yeah, um, my family was pretty competitive. I mean, uh, as you said, it runs my family growing up. It's always been something that I wanted to do. And Basketball is something that kind of came easy to me, and it was something I enjoyed. I um, had two older brothers that were able to push me uh, all growing up and uh, make me work hard and uh, uh, see the correlation between uh, the game of basketball and the game of life. Uh, really, really helped and uh, kind of led me to the path that I had today. Bohannon's teammate Seth Tuttle spoke about how hard Matt works and how he pushes others to play at their highest potential. It's, uh, you know, playing with Matt makes it a lot, a lot of fun. You know, uh, he's the one out there talking with me all the time. Uh, you know, talking about a play, a certain play, or, you know, our next play coming up, or, or just, uh, just, you know, just about anything. You know, he, um, him and I have a connection on the floor that, that makes the game, you know, easy, uh, a lot of fun. You know, he, uh, he understands what I like to do. I understand where he's going to be uh, when I touch the ball. So, you know, just having a, having a good, a, a brotherly connection out there uh, makes a lot of fun. This year's men's squad is having a historical season. It's currently 26-2. and two. Bohannon is a key contributor and has had some big moments for the Panthers. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, this, this team is uh, one that I haven't really been a part of in, in a long time. And, uh, it's, uh, it's something truly special. Uh, everyone cares about each other. Uh, no one cares who gets the job done. We just want the job done. And, uh, we're able to push each other and uh, really learn from each other and just have fun and, and be ourselves. And, uh, um, we're, we're basically a brotherhood because that's, uh, that's what it comes down to. You know, every offseason, you know, he's the one in there shooting in the morning. Uh, you know, he motivates me to get up and shoot. Um, you know, there's times where I go in there and shoot with him in the mornings or, or uh, you know, in the afternoons or, you know, sometimes he'll, he'll motivate me to get me to come back later on in the afternoon to, to do ball handling or whatever. You know, Matt's, uh, Matt's been a great leader for, for our team um, in, in the fact that he's really tough uh, with what he does. You know, he's, uh, he's not going to have any off days. He's not going to skip any days. He's, you know, he's not going to skip one rep in the weight room. You know, he's one of those guys that, you know, he comes in to go to work and, he, you know, he gets his work done. He does it. Uh, he does it extremely hard. So, you know, he's helped. He's helped lead our team uh, in a mindset era, an area that uh, has definitely helped our team improve. Getting to the level of play that the Panthers are at right now isn't easy. Bohannon spoke about how the team got to this point. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of things that Coach talks about on a daily basis. Uh, Trust me, preparation, and getting in the gym, every chance you get, and uh, just trying to continue, continually improve yourself. And that's something that I've tried to do for a long time now. Just every time I, I get on the court, I want to get something out of it. And whether that'll be a 20-minute workout or a 40-minute workout, I just want to do something that I'll get out of it that will help me in the future. And uh, that's something that I've tried to do for the last four years since I got here. And uh, the coaches have been nothing but uh, great in uh, helping that out. With postseason play coming soon, Panther fans are excited to see just what will happen with their beloved team. Most wonder how their team is prepping for postseason play. Um, I'd say preparing for postseason, we're just uh, trying to do the daily things that we can to get better. 
this time of the season, the teams either level off, um, get a little worse, or get a little better. And our job is, and our goal is to get a little better every day we get in. Um, that may not be a, a whole lot every, on a day-to-day -day basis, but every little bit counts. And uh, if we learn from one mistake or another um, that we'll see later and learn from it now, it's only going to help us going forward. So that's, I'd say that's the biggest thing we're trying to do. Just take one thing, one one thing a day, and just keep pounding that thing on, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, do something pretty special. Here. For the Prowl, I'm Ian Shilhanik, and go Panthers. What an interesting man who has provided many highlights for Panther fans this season. Speaking of highlights, there were a handful of athletic events this past weekend, and there were a heap of amazing plays by our Panthers. Let's take a look at the best of the best as Austin Hansen has this week's top plays. Welcome to this week's edition of the Prowl's Top Plays. We start off this week's countdown at the McLeod Center. Brittany Donaldson drives the lane past one, two, three, now four Sycamore defenders and takes it inside for the layup. You and I would win the game 29 to 64. Next up, we have Seth Tuttle picking up the steal who dishes it to Jeremy Morgan for the reverse layup. More from this game later. Coming in at number three is Amber Sorensen, who had an amazing night beyond the arc against Evansville. While Brittany Donaldson picked up four three-pointers on the night, Amber would match that and add two more trays of her own. At number two, we have Mr. Highlight, Wes Washman. After getting the steal, he would go the length of the court and slam it home. The Panthers would beat Bradley 56 to 39. And with our number one top play of the week, we go to the mat with UNI's Jared Jensen. He needed a pin for the team to beat the Old Dominion Big Blue. In one of the most exciting come from behind victories the Panther train has seen, the junior from Rapid City, South Dakota would pull it off, getting the pin in two minutes and 14 seconds. UNI wins on senior night, 18 to 16. That's it for this week's top plays. Back to you in the studio. If you enjoyed watching the first-hand look at the lives and success of our UNI Panther sports teams and clubs and their activities, find us on Facebook under UNI TV's The Prowl, Twitter at UNI Prowl, or on Instagram. For The Prowl, I'm Margot Sturgis. And I'm Sean Dangler. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the Hill.